tell you that I took TikTok off my phone? No. No. But isn't this not the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out like that. <laughs> Mickey is here for ambulatory paraparesis or tetraparesis, it's unclear. He had, we'll see, obviously, as we go. Um, he had an episode where, over the weekend, where he became super stiff and then in all four legs and then fell down the stairs and then went to the RDVM, but now he seems painful uh, and is not walking well. So um, he's here now. It's not normal. Yeah, I should have yesterday. It's okay. It's like a little warthog with his one tooth. Yes. Cute, <laughs> So far, his cranial nerves were normal. He has a proprioceptive deficit in the right thoracic limb and a delay in the left thoracic limb. Mickey! On Saturday, he had an episode of, like, he kind of very suddenly became stiff in all four legs and then fell down the stairs. Took him to the vet. By the time they got there, he was more normal, but not totally normal. Um, he's here for pelvic limb weakness. He's weak in all four today. On his exam, cranial nerves are normal. I can't elicit any nystagmus. He's got a proprioceptive deficit in the right thoracic, delay in the left thoracic. Delayed in both pelvic, but less so than the thoracic limbs. Doesn't seem super painful to me, although the owners note that he's been like kind of crying out, so maybe a little bit painful. Um, and he's a taxic in all four. He looks almost like a vestibular quality ataxia. He kind of stumbles to either side, um, mostly the right side from when I saw him outside. So I'd call him kind of caudal fossa cranial cervical. He's uh, kind of weak and wobbly in all four legs. So if you set him down on the ground, he'll kind of stumble to to either side, mostly the right side, and um, sometimes he even crosses over in, in the front legs and the back legs, um, so, so all four of the legs are affected. And that's not normal for a dog to cross their legs over. Their, their legs should kind of stay on the appropriate side during their walking. I, when I check his spatial awareness, so meaning his knowledge of his, where his legs are in space, he's a little bit delayed in knowing where his front legs are. The most common things that we see in young Yorkie um, or you know kind of young adult Yorkies to cause these signs would be things like a slip disc in the beginning part of the neck things like meningitis which is an autoimmune condition in dogs they can have strokes um, so you know whether that's in the neck or the brain they can have strokes in, in both parts um, they can unfortunately have things like tumors which are relatively rare at this age in this breed but we still have to mention it um, and then the last thing we'd be thinking about would be actually a congenital problem. So um, essentially something he was born with that just kind of got worse over time. So overall, you know, that's kind of a wide variety of possible causes with very variable treatment options and very variable, you know, prognosis and outcome for him. The best way for us to know exactly what's going on is going to be to do an MRI scan to look at that part of the body. Um, so we'd actually look at both the entire brain and the beginning part of the spinal cord in the neck all together. On Saturday, was outside suddenly wobbly, wobbly in the back legs, seemed uncomfortable on Saturday, was hospitalized at MVS since Saturday. Today on exam is paraplegic with intact deep pain. Maybe there's a little bit of shuffle in the okay. pelvic limbs, but it's really mild. It doesn't seem painful, um, but I don't know if it's gotten pain meds. Um, cutaneous trunk eye cuts off about T13. Reflexes are normal. Postural reactions absent in the pelvic limbs, intact in the thoracic limbs. Cranial nerves intact. Um, so localizes T3, L3, SE versus disc, disco tumor less likely. So I'm going to recommend that we scan plus or minus do surgery.
middle of a hemihymenectomy or on the right side at T1301. So this is the, the window in the bone that we've made kind of around here. And what I've got here is called the periosteum. It's kind of this last layer. And I'm going to remove that. And kind of behind here, you'll see there's this disc material, which is this kind of white stuff. There's kind of some reddish tan stuff here, which is epidural fat mixed with hemorrhage. And I'm going to try and move that out of the way. And we'll eventually see spinal cord. This dog came in for paraplegia with intact deep pain or no susception. So on a scale of one to five, with five being the worst, he's a four. supposed to touch pugs ears and faces so I, I met Lily boo boo she's seven and a half years old for the last couple months we've noticed difficulty jumping and it's gotten worse we thought that maybe it was a problem with our, our nails being too long we got a nail trim and that helped a little bit, but ever since November, we've become more wobbly and some days are better than others. We don't really seem that painful. Whenever a dog's having a hard time walking, kind of the first question we try and answer is, is it a neurological problem or not? So we kind of ask ourselves, is it is it because the nails are too long or is it because you know the hips are bad or the knees are bad or is it a neurological problem? <clears throat> and once we start seeing the, the legs sort of knuckle like like I see that you, you wrote here and, and what I'm seeing on her examination, once we start seeing that, that strongly suggests a neurological problem. The second question we try and answer is what part of the neurological system is affected? Is it the brain or the spinal cord of the neck or the spinal cord of the back or the nerves and muscles? And, and Lily Boo Boo's examination suggests a problem affecting the spinal cord of her middle back. I, I can tell that because her front legs look relatively normal, but her back legs, she's able to walk, but she kind of crisscrosses them and scuffs them and is just, you know, kind of loosey-goosey, weak and wobbly in her rear end. The other things that I see on her examination, if I sort of support her and flip her feet over to being on the top of her feet, which is the incorrect position for her feet, she replaces them really, really slowly. So that also suggests a, a neurological problem and combined with the rest of her examination suggests that it's in her mid back. <clears throat> I agree, I don't think she's super painful. At least she's not acting painful. So uh, putting that all together, seven and a half year old pug, mid back spinal cord problem, non-painful, and then sort of waxing and waning. There are a couple different things that we think of that could be causing this. One of them is that quote unquote pug myelopathy. Um, there are other names for it if, if you get on the internet. Uh, things like constrictive myelopathy and facet hypoplasia and subarachnoid cyst and subarachnoid diverticulum. And there are all kind of names that 
we're kind of all describing the same condition in 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 dogs we, we, there isn't really a consensus yet on on what what we call it so pug myelopathy is one of the more common things that that people call it so is that what she has i don't know that's a possible cause but there are other things that can cause the exact same symptoms in a seven and a half year old pug we do see slipped discs in dogs uh, that, that's the most common spinal cord condition that we see in dogs that can cause these exact same symptoms. Unfortunately, things like tumors are a possibility. Um, dogs can get things like meningitis or infections. Dogs can get other malformations in their spinal cord or outside of their spinal cord. And occasionally, uh, dogs will get a condition called degenerative myelopathy but I usually see that in large breed dogs. I usually do not see it in pugs. Alrighty. Well, give us a few minutes to get the paperwork up to you and we'll draw her blood. Sounds like a plan. Southeast Veterinary Neurology is on a mission to help 20,000 pets regain the ability to walk by the end of 2025. It's a huge undertaking, but one that matters. So we're hiring. We're looking for people that are passionate about caring for pets and caring for people. We're looking for people that take their work seriously, but don't take everything too seriously. So if you're empathetic, resilient, a team player, and want to challenge yourself to make a difference in the lives of tens of thousands of people and pets, let us know.